Welcome. I'm your host, Dustin. And joining us today is, I guess you could say, one half of the upcoming movie, uh, religious horror movie, is um, Deliver Us, and it's Leroy Coons. Um, so we're going to be talking about all things Antichrist, Messiah, religious horror, and horror in general. So Leroy, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm I'm great. I'm tired, um, but I have the house to myself because my son just started kindergarten, so I don't know what to do with myself <laughs> during the day anymore. <laughs> I have a five-month-old, and I'm tired all the time now. Oh, yeah, so. yep, yep. I don't miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. um, one thing I always like to do uh, before we start jumping into questions about the movie is to kind of ask where, you know, everything kind of started with you, whether it's the filmmaking, the acting, the writing, anything like that. So where did your story kind of begin going into filmmaking uh so i would say when i was 16 i started writing screenplays oh okay. and the first, yeah the first screenplay i wrote was uh, about my godfather who was like this star athlete at you know, the university of nebraska and he became a quadriplegic oh. and uh and just writing his story like his true life story because the way that he persevered like this whole, the worst thing that could happen to him and then the way that he went through life in a like dignified way and made the absolute best of it. Um, and just seeing the effect I think that it had on him, it kind of kept me to keep going with writing and be like, wow, this is, you know, this is special. Wow. That's, that's really powerful. And I, I'm sorry to hear that about your, your grandfather. That's, it's always rough, you know, when things hit oh, you. Oh, like uh, Godfather. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Godfather. I'm sorry. Godfather. Yeah. yeah. It's always really rough to, you know have life changes like that like um my uh my girlfriend her uh grandfather is kind of like that right now too and he got into an accident Sorry. at work can't walk anymore and it's 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 rough man so um that's awesome though that you you were able to do something to be positive in that regard yeah. that's awesome oh. um but um is writing something that you always wanted to do as well or did you kind of want to go more into acting and directing i think writing and directing is the thing uh cause I, I went to uh to notre dame my first year of college wow um, yeah so that was a that's some more catholic background and then i was like okay if i'm gonna make a film like a film career I, I should probably transfer to los angeles get started and so i, I transferred to usc film um was there for a little bit and then i was like okay uh i don't know if i should be spending all this money on this i could watch these <laughs> uh i like i remember james cameron with just 42 dollars. he got a whole he just went to the library at usc yeah um so i used that money uh to make a film that me and my brother had written in high school so we were writing when i was 17 he was like 16 uh and 21 and it was just like a low budget um coming of age you know hanging on the couch like growing up movie about beer and uh, that kind oh, of nice. started <laughs> Yeah, I love beer. If I, I didn't have it on Blurk, it's a mess. I have a whole brewery in my apartment. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Keep doing it. It's my little side side thing. That's awesome, man. Uh, I mean, beer. I mean, who doesn't like beer? Um, mm -hmm. I always like to enjoy that as much as possible. And to see that you are doing that as like a hobby while also mm -hmm. out here making movies and made a film about that. That's so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> And to see, you know, what you're creating today, like the movie we're going to be talking about uh, today, which is Deliver Us, which is a pretty heavy topic. You know, there's a lot of things going on, there, a lot of themes. And I feel like a story that has been told, but the way that this movie is structured and the acting and, and everything in here is so different, especially that we're kind of in a year where there's a lot of like religious horror movies coming out. You know, we had the Pope's Exorcist. We have the Exorcist movie coming out. We have this one. Yeah. I think there was a couple other ones as well. Um, so it's kind of a, a cool year to be a fan, like myself, of this kind of subgenre and horror. Um, was this something that you always wanted to try to tackle in like your own sort of way with your your writing partner? Uh, so I definitely know what you mean about the, almost in a renaissance of it because the seventies horror, especially the religious seventies horror. Oh yeah. Was, yeah. Um, 
And I, what got me thinking about it is my, fav, my favorite film professor at USC was an ex-Jesuit priest. And he said that, um, that the horror genre was the only one where you could make a film about God or divinity being the subject of it and mainstream audiences like still engage with it. And that kind of got me interested in a way to explore like Catholic themes, uh, even Christian themes. Um, and then obviously seeing Rosemary's Baby, Ken Russell's The Devil, you know, being screened in like 35 uh, in the theater was cool and had probably big influence. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Rosemary's Baby, that's a big one. And obviously we got The Exorcist too. That yes. Oh, so yeah. Of course. Huge, the Exorcist. You know, I guess not just like influential, but very inspiring to a lot of other filmmakers, especially of the time to be like, wow, you can get away with doing things like that. And now like yeah. we're in this kind of new age where, you know, boundaries are being pushed again with, with indie uh, films as well that are outside of like the subgenre. But um, to see that we are now again, kind of pushing boundaries in the religious subgenre of horror to the mainstream audience and to kind of bring back you know the exorcist which i don't think we really need to but that's besides the point but to see these other films that are kind of branching up like aside from that like the pope's exorcist like i said earlier and this one um one movie that i was thinking about when i was watching this which is weird because the the tones of that movie is so completely different is the day of the beast that one was was a really good. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. It's a um, Spanish Actually, Italian seen. horror movie okay. where like they're trying to stop essentially the Antichrist from being born, you know. But obviously, in this film, without going through too much spoilers, oh. since this yeah. isn't out yet, um, there's things that happen in here that kind of like make me think of that movie a lot. Um, so I want to kind of go back to how this yeah. was kind of. I guess created. Um, where were you pulling influences from other films or writings or like personal experiences or anything like that in to deliver us? Uh, so aside from the idea for it, which, which actually came from my father having this idea and then oh, thinking wow. it was just brilliant, I was like, "Oh my god, he could do so much with that!" Um, and then. Uh, deciding to write with my brother. So we have that rapport and this, this Catholic background. Uh, so we drew from, from stories of the Bible and then also a lot of uh, similar books we've read. Uh, there's, uh, I don't know, the Brothers Karamazov, there's this chapter, The Grand Inquisitor, oh, about okay. where Jesus comes back and the Catholic, during the Spanish Inquisition and the Catholic Church captures him and uh, basically just lectures him about everything he's done wrong and how that they know better about what for humanity. And so we use that as inspiration. Uh, but the big and then the biggest one is trying to tie it into all the other like uh, world religions and the sort of Joseph Campbell sort of unifying myth thing that we are. We are like, doesn't matter where you are, it's just deep in us. Mm -hmm. And the two brothers is just everywhere from Zeus and Hades, um, the Egyptian Set and Osiris. You have uh, Thor and Loki, the Nordic. And then you really could say Jesus and Satan are brothers in a sense. Yeah. Um, and so we framed it around that. Wow. And I watched this film twice. Uh, I did it when I first got the screen for it. Then I watched it again today. And I have to say, it is a beautiful film. Uh, the sceneries that are going on in here, the way things are shot, how you have like these, these long one takes every now and then they're so well crafted. Uh, it's something that I really, really enjoy while watching films other than you know seeing how great the acting and the writing is is to see the sceneries and how you can capture them and there's some really really cool snow areas and i'm a big like snow person when it comes to films i love seeing snow um, yeah. so to see that you guys captured that was awesome and i wanted to ask where were you shooting um this film was it in russia i would probably say no right <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, we were in uh, Tallinn, Estonia, which is right next to Russia. Oh, okay. so it's very close. But the same way I'm obsessed with snow and film, I think it started when I saw Dr. Zhivago when I was really young <laughs> and just like how atmospheric and just like uh, I, like cinematic snow is where you feel cold or uh, adds that tension. Yeah. And like the, the crisp sound of your footsteps, too. 
Um, because there's a scene that happens that's it's pretty stunning. <laughs> I will say that happens in in a snowy area, and it's it's beautiful. Like saying that without spoiling it uh, might sound weird, um, because I know you know what I'm talking about, but I just the way that it all kind of lands out is is really really beautiful um and i kind of wanted to go on that as well with practical effects uh because oh. going into this i didn't know what i was going to expect if it was going to be more you know visual things in the background or just um noises that you're hearing to kind of like, give you that feel that someone's watching you or just like a presence you know when you're watching movies like this you're expecting there to be something that's always lingering um but in this one there's actually a lot of really cool practical effects that you know were taking place in here um so was that something that uh you and your team wanted to go for or was it something kind of brought in after her? you're like okay we're going to be doing some of these brutal scenes and we kind of want to do it as practical as possible instead of having to do it in post i yeah i would say definitely the you can just make it feel more real. Uh, we, I don't like violence in films when it feels fake. It's like the video game violence. I yes. want violence for you to feel violence and how horrible it is. Like it's not pretty. It's not fun in that sense. It should make you, you know. Uh, and I think I was real inspired by like how well Hereditary affected me. Oh my uh, God, yes those moments and it's not like it's not something we hadn't seen but it's just you it hit because it was so well executed and like led up to it. and to answer about the sound um it was definitely planned we also knew we had brent kaiser who did the sound for everything everywhere all at once doing it and we wanted to make sure that he could you know do his magic we weren't exactly sure what he's gonna do but create enough uh you know room for him yeah yeah because there's a lot of really cool like even Later on in the film, it, it kind of progresses like there's a presence that grows stronger and stronger. And I know that's intentional. Um, but once you get towards maybe the last, I want to say, 35 minutes, you start hearing these voices. And I love that. Like it just it gave me chills. I'm like, so there's something there taunting these people. Because you see after, you know, um, the the kids and you see that they are kind of influencing things. And I've never seen that in a film that's kind of tackling the Antichrist and the Messiah. You don't see it influencing people around them like this film does. Like what you and your team and the writing, even your acting in here, which we will be talking about in a second, um, really you know, tackles and I feel breaks new boundaries for the genre is absolutely incredible. Oh, well, that's cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lot of conversations about uh, what dem demonic possession and that kind of influence would be. Uh, when I don't know, like, I you can see it on that Exorcist poster. It's just like too much, like right from the get go. I think why it works so well in the movie, like the first one, is the poster is just him going into this house. You don't know what it is, and it builds to it. Yeah. But then building off of that and trying to make it more. Um, it would be indistinguishable between someone with a psychotic break or schizophrenia, whether or not they were being uh, demonically possessed or if they were doing certain things or allowing them to be uh, their worst impulses to be amplified by this voice. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And uh, to know that this is going into theaters as well, I'm excited for everybody who's going to be in that theater. I'm going to seek it out. Hopefully it is in one of my theaters by here because i know that the audio is just going to nail it in all cylinders um so i want to kind of go to your acting because you wear many many hats mm -hmm. in this film writing producing directing acting on one of the main characters so there's a lot that you're doing already in here so what oh, was yeah. it like having to balance all of these other things to make sure that you are present in each one of these stages in this film. I think that having the team like me, Isaac and crew are, we've known each other for 16 years now oh, and wow. they're my best friends. 
uh, in the world. So that has like that being able to lean and they're also extremely talented. Like you were talking about the beautiful visuals. Isaac just shot the season two of Loki and has done some other just so awesome. Yeah. (laughs) So he just brings a whole nother level of, of like working in that world and then coming together. Um, And then I, I think uh, I like director because my big thing too is working with actors and I, I, I try to know each character as well as I could if I was going to play them, like even the female character, so that when it does come down to it, if they're having trouble, I can work it through them. And I did the same for Father Fox and prepared that character, even though I was trying to get a bigger named actor to play that role until the very last, until like two weeks. I didn't know I was going to play that role until like two or a week out. And it was just oh, like wow. the final. Out. Yeah. Well, and so, I, you definitely nailed it, man, <laughs> for sure. Thank you. It means a lot. I mean, thank you for, you know, having a great performance and having all these great supporting actors around you. Um, because everybody in here, it's not a very big cast, which is another thing with a film like this, you're like, oh, going into religious horde is gonna be, you know, priests everywhere. You're gonna be in in a big area of the Vatican or anything. This is gonna be so many people, but it's really not. It's very isolated, but it feels big, if you know oh, what cool. I mean by that because of how well everybody carries each other and how fast paced really the story goes and to see you as your own character in here as father fox kind of you know you have this doubt and you kind of want to get out of what you're doing to live a different life essentially and and be with the person that you love and then things just kind of get flung at you and you're like oh okay whatever you're like, oh, this is going to be a quick thing. And then it turns into literally your whole life being changed in a matter of like a week. <laughs> it's absolutely it crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was definitely interested in that. Yeah. Um, so when you were, you know, you found out that you were going to be playing Father Fox, um, cool. even though that you know that you, you had a hand in the script and you know what was going to be going on, when you were getting into that character, was there anybody you were kind of pulling from from a different film or a different actor that you knew? Or is this kind of all like your own interpretation of how you wanted this person to be? I would say I approached it more from uh, like his arc. Aside from without giving like from Jack Nicholson and The Shining was obviously a huge. Oh, yeah, there's definitely some yeah. stuff at the end of this film. <laughs> Yes. So that was it Uh, for for him to just feel as grounded as possible uh, was important to me. And so that he could go a place. Um, And then as like the, the story of Job uh, Job was a big, uh, cause he's this person and every, all these horrible things are happening to him. Um, And that he's struggling with throughout the entire time is that, like you said, he has this plan for his life, uh, but it's not the plan that God has for him in this thing. And it's him choosing whether or not he's going to reject that and being angry about it. Um, and so, yeah, I guess sometimes I over intellectual, like intellectualize it and then just trying to bring it back so that it's, you know, you're living in it. You yeah. know, I th- struggle as an actor. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like I said, everybody in here, I think does such a great job and to see you um, kind of go through these stages as well as like the other actors are there, but, I feel your story throughout this whole film, I think, is more impactful and I guess somewhat more important than anybody else because of where you were at the beginning of the film. Even though we got introduced to the other main character at the very beginning and to see what she was going through and then to realize what has happened um, is really, really cool to see someone else kind of come in a little bit down the, the road go through all these stages, hit this breaking point, and then they kind of still go on and fulfill essentially this prophecy that was created, which I think that was really, really cool is seeing all these different like parts of the prophecy and and see where they were all landed. It was was so cool how everything kind of just lands in this film. Wow, that's cool to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I mean, the storytelling is great. Like everybody on here did such a great job writing, directing, acting. Um, so I guess we can kind of talk about the prophecy. I mean, we kind of oh. touched on like what you, where you were drawing things from and whatnot. But 
to see all these different ways that was presented throughout the film, is it, uh, did you pull from other stories to kind of have the different ways, like you have how it was shown in the beginning with that uh-huh. type of way. And then you had it kind of at the end where they saw the things at the, at the house. Um, so where did that kind of kind of come into, um, into mind essentially? Yeah. So we started first to find that uh, the religion that we could, we could uh, like ground everything in. And so that opening scene is a Zoroastrian, Zoroastrian temple. Okay. Um, which is a, uh, it's an ancient religion. And so like it would be take place in Iran and it it's believed to be one of the very first, if not the first uh, monotheistic religion where it was like a duality. It was like, there's, there was a, there's a like good and evil were in contention with each other for all of time. And so some people say that could lead to uh, Christianity or like influence the ideas. And so we started there and then building off of my Catholic background and then trying to weave in and connect all the stuff that could kind of, as if every religion, uh, and I do believe this is like, has so much truth and wisdom built into it. And that the truth is, uh, is like hidden from everyone. And so that, that every one is going to maybe crack this part of the code or something like that. And seeing how that we could weave it together, um, in the story that we did our prophecy that is hopefully going to be three films so that, we, and that the prophecy isn't set in stone that, that if characters do reject it, then other things, like other things become possible. Oh, which wow. I think You're planning on having this to be three films. That's the idea. I mean, it wow. depends how. Okay. I was actually going to ask that, but I was like, I don't know if that's something that was going to be, if it was going to be like a sequel to it because of how it kind of stops, but okay. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in man. Wow. Yeah. The first draft of the script would have basically been the first two movies. Uh, it, it would have had the boys older as well oh, and nice. we realized oh this is you know one thing at a time you know yeah exactly but i'm i'm here for it like i love how everything landed at the end of this because it's such a journey and it's so beautiful and menacing at the same time like you have this guy who's essentially wanting to wipe out you know one of the one of the boys you and you feel that presence throughout the whole film and like even himself, like you look at him, like that's that's evil. <laughs> that guy is evil. Um, and then you know things kind of go a different direction and whatnot. And then to see your character at the end, kind of have a new life. And then, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I need that right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> um. So, uh, let's see. Another question I always like to ask when um, we are talking to people who direct horror or if I've looked in like their resumes and see, oh, I don't really see a lot of horror in their resume over here. Have you always been a fan of horror movies? I mean, I do love horror films. Uh, I didn't think I would make a ton of them. Uh, I'm going to now because I Hell realize yeah. that we can do with the genre. I mean, like some of my favorite films, like The Thing and Alien are probably two of my all time favorite movies. And so when horror is done great, it, it's, it, it's arguably one of the best, if not the best genre. Um, I think what I just, what we wanted to make sure is that it was a horror film that was more like a grim fairy tale where it's so horrific, but it's always like a moral message. It's trying to warn you about the evils of the world, which I think a lot of people that watch horror films do. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems that people who are like either make horror films or into horror, they're like more well adjusted than sometimes at least people who make comedies or comedians. It's like a re- yeah. it's not what you expect. It's and I think it comes from them like contemplating on on a lot of this, you know, darkness or evil. And it's like, why do you watch stories? It's to learn how to um, deal with the thing in the story, like viscerally through that character, you know. Yeah, for sure. And that's another thing that's so cool about the horror genre is how well um, it kind of reflects on like what's happening in the world as well. And of course, this um, this movie really kind of ties into like what's going on as well. And I think it's a movie that will kind of always have that that same message throughout the history of time, because there's always that the balance of good and evil. You always feel that in the world of where are we landing now? Is it more over on this side or more over on this side? Are we in the middle? Wherever it may be. And that's why I personally love 
horrors because of the way that you can write a story and it can be very impactful. A lot of people that say, if you watch horror movies, like, oh, okay, you're just going to watch like gore and people get ripped apart. No, not really. It's always yeah. about the story as well and to see where it kind of goes. And this is a movie that's an example of that. Like, yeah, there's some horrific images that are happening in here. And yes, it's a religious horror movie, but there's so many other things that are going on underneath everything that I think is brilliant. And uh, I don't think you could do in any other type of genre. Like if you label this as like a drama, uh-huh. it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> you know? No way. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of the genre is you can morph so many things um, into it. Like people say that the best combination of a horror movie is a horror and comedy or, you know, to start it as a drama script and then kind of morph it because essentially it is, it's a very horrific, sad story at most times when you're watching horror movies. So you can see the genre, uh, the the drama that's in there, but there's also so many other aspects that go on for sure. Yeah. That's been a new favorite genre of mine is the horror comedy. Oh, it's so good. It's so Cabin good. in the Woods and Werewolves Within was, was one recently that I thought was really good and funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's oh. awesome. I want to see you direct a horror comedy now. <laughs> Take it back. Yeah. That would be awesome. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this film. And I want to go into so many details, but the movie's not out yet. So I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but I guess we can kind of say or go over without spoiling things if you want is I always like to see like what your favorite scenes are or was there a difficult shot that um, you couldn't do in one take and had to do it over and over again like was there anything like that during this film um, without spoiling yeah you know I would say that the real difficult uh, scene to shoot was the um, going in the ice because it was in the middle of winter uh yeah and the middle of the night and it was a real lake we actually cut into that frozen lake like 16 inches in and to be in underwater and in the water as long as i was i had to train for it and get prepared and uh now i'm i I like uh, all that stuff that people talk about the ice um baths really does work the energy you feel really great doing it uh so um yeah, and I tried to make sure I wouldn't die. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> so, very important. Right away, you go into <laughs> cardiac arrest. So uh, that was probably one of my favorite ones, and just how it turned out because it, it's kind of his transition into going on the journey. It's like yeah. his baptism. It's actually a Eastern Orthodox way that people get baptized is they go out and they actually cut that in the uh, cross in the ice and they go under there. Oh wow! I didn't um, know that. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> That's that's crazy. Um, yeah, I totally forgot about that scene. But now that you mentioned it, that is a crazy one. There's, there's a lot of other really crazy things that happen, like there's dream sequences that go on that like you're also questioning yourself, is that reality? Is that is that not reality? Um, is that going to happen? And then, you know, sometimes maybe it does and sometimes maybe it doesn't or it's in a, a different form um, or there's like parts where, you know, characters are essentially battling themselves and they don't realize that until the very end which i think is really really cool and surprising and it it kept me very intrigued because this is uh, about an hour and 44 minutes so it's it's right above you know the 90 minute mark but it's it's amazing and it's great throughout the whole thing there's not a moment in this film where i feel bored and that's something that is very very important that's and that we always said first and foremost because you're watching a movie and it should be entertaining it should be a checkout from life you know like you, you can inspire you to think of all that stuff but if you really want to like do a deep dive on that you should you know read a book or listen to you know people talk about it in depth in a conversation so yeah. that's a that's a great that's the best thing to hear yeah and um again like thank you to everybody who was a part of this film and everybody who acted in it and doing these crazy things of having to go through ice or trek through a lot of snow (laughs) in the middle of nowhere um and to do some of these really scary scenes that you know that do hold an impact and also for the the two babies that were in this film um i guess i can ask you about that um how was it casting 
the babies. Like that's that's something I never really get to ask because I don't really cover films where there's there's like babies involved. <laughs> Yeah, that was cool to work with the babies. I, we wanted them to look as uh, similar as possible. We wanted them to be identical twins. I don't know if we really do that. I, at least they'll grow up to be identical twins. Um, but when you're casting babies, I, I think it's like the you're going to be dealing most most with the mothers. Yeah. And so I think you're almost casting the moms. Like, what kind of disposition do they have? Are they a good stage parent? You know, they're like uh, and. Uh, uh, and the way that we just decided, unfortunately, one of the babies, it seemed like he was a colky baby. So he was always just kind of, uh, it was just always sad and crying. And so it was uh, uh, Samuel. And then the little happy baby was uh, Jacob. He was just happy all the time. Sleep, chill. Yeah. Smile. That's, that's <laughs> you know? great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, baby actors. That's, that's how my cinematography always pitches. It's the best baby acting you will ever see in a movie. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, well, congrats to everybody that did this. Um, I don't have too many other questions without spoiling anything, but we can always have another chat about that once it's out. Um, is to yeah, kind of ask you what what's happening after this. Uh, I know that you mentioned that plans are to make this into multi films, but is there anything else kind of going on that you could talk about? Uh, so, speaking of uh, religious horror, uh, I'll probably make an Inuit. Uh, uh, mythology horror set in like, like the arctic oh so, i'm so into that yeah uh it's just like yeah great setting the snow um but so then exploring all these same themes but through a, a different uh religion um which is kind of how we crafted this in in general uh that's yeah. awesome i'm looking forward to it um this was a great chat like I said, I don't want to spoil too many things. I know we usually have an hour for these, but we can always um, reconvene when it's a little bit more convenient to go over some of these other things. I have a lot of questions regarding spoilery things. I don't want to do that before. Yeah, I'd love to do it again. Yeah. I can't forget. I forgot the wolves. The wolves were the coolest thing. Those were oh, giant. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't do that in LA. Like the guy who was handling them was out of his mind. And so like <laughs> he's like five feet away from me. And this wolf is like, he's no, it's okay. It's okay. Go for it. Go for it. He's growling like he's gonna attack me. And he's like, it's good. It's good. Oh my god. <laughs> I would have been so scared. <laughs> <laughs> like you better that be having good. me padded up with a bunch of stuff right now, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. This is awesome. And thank you to everybody who put this together. Um and Leroy, thank you for you coming on here and um we will definitely be chatting again we will we'll work that out and do a deep dive into everything into this film but hopefully this is enough to get people out to see it in the theaters uh september 29th which i think is also going to be on digital and you can get it as a vod they can rent rent it as well but i'm going to be going to the theater for sure um it's great seeing movies like this come out because for a long time we didn't really have any religious horror movies if we did it was always like the exorcist of this or the exorcist of that but never like good versus evil like really down and dirty you know like going to yeah. like the center of everything so i have to really thank you and your team for doing that awesome. well thank you thank you for this uh interview this plug yeah i mean thank you and i'm so excited to see what's next um that's about all i have for this one so thank you everybody for listening and watching go check this out please September 29th in a theater near you or rent it or get it on VOD because you will not regret it. All right. Thank you guys so much.